Hello scientific people, how are you today? Today we are going to discuss about the derivation of the energy expression of an electron in the nth orbit of hydrogen like atoms. So we are basically going to discuss about Bohr's model. So as per Niels Bohr's model, we are going to find out the expression of energy of an electron in nth orbit. But before the derivation, we are supposed to accept two points without derivation. That is why they are named as hypothesis. First hypothesis uh, says that angular momentum of an electron in the nth orbit of hydrogen like atoms. Uh, we, this concept is only for hydrogen and hydrogen like atoms. So, you we may restrict the atomic number till uh, maximum 5 to 6. So, this theory is not holding true for the atomic numbers which are more than 5. You can uh, talk about lithium but not exactly lithium, lithium ion. We will be talking about uh, that particular thing in uh, depth afterwards. So, uh, suppose this is, an, this is an atom of hydrogen and uh, this is the nucleus, the center one is the, the nucleus like this and we know that in hydrogen atom there is only one hydrogen is 1H1. So, one proton in the nucleus, there are no neutrons inside and there is one electron which keeps on moving in a circular path and this is what is called as an orbit. Now this electron keeps on moving round and round in a circular path and at this point of time suppose if we uh, consider the path of the electron to be anti-clockwise then at this point the direction of velocity is tangential like this and this would be the radius r and radius vector r vector is always pointing towards the electron and the vector starts from the nucleus. So, the tail of the nucleus is over here r of the r vectors head is over here we can also pull this vector over here like this. So, this is the r vector make, make sure that we do not tilt the vector, vector and the vector holds straight only. Now, we find that the angle between r and v is 90 degrees. So, r vector is perpendicular to the velocity vector. Now, angular momentum, angular momentum is actually L that is r cross p or we can also write down as r p sin theta. R p is m v, so m v r sin theta, where theta is the angle between v and r that turns out to be 90, so it is simply m v r. So, in this entire lecture, we are not going to write L vector, we are just going to write down L as m v r because the angle between r and v r 90 degree. Okay. So, and from yes and from this we can also talk about the torque of an electron when it jumps from one orbit to the another right ok. So, we would be talking about that afterwards and uh, the second hypothesis means in this uh, in this hydrogen or hydrogen like atom uh, we have a positive nucleus which is very small and suppose if an electron is in and this is first orbit this is second orbit if an electron say for exam example jumps down if there is a vacancy created over here, then the energy of an electron in this is E2 and the energy of an electron which is required over here is E1 and E2 is larger than E1, we, we are going to prove this in this video lecture session. And so, if an electron jumps from higher orbit to lower orbit, a photon is emitted whose energy is Hc by lambda and that energy is equal to the difference in the energies that is e to minus e 1 right. And conversely if an electron wants to go up say for example an electron is already over here and it wants to go up then we need to provide a photon whose energy is e to minus e 1. So, that photon will be absorbed by this electron and it will again come back over here. So, when an electron jumps down a photon is emitted, when an electron wants to go up a photon has to be absorbed. So, by these two hypotheses we are going to start our derivation 
in the next sheet. So let's continue our discussion. We have a hydrogen or hydrogen like atom over here and this is the center of the atom that is the nuclei. Suppose the element is XZA that means there are Z protons in the nuclei and A minus Z neutrons in the nuclei. But A minus Z nucleons sorry neutrons they do not contribute to the charge of the nuclei. So the positive charge is plus Z E. It is because a one proton has got plus E charge so Z protons have got plus Z E charge so that would be the charge of the nucleus. And here we have shown uh, a hydrogen like atom. Hydrogen like atom means only one orbit right and here an electron we can consider two electrons as well one electron two electron it is only going to matter in the potential energy so let's consider a simplified version first and then we would be also talking about two electrons in an orbit uh, the necessity of second orbit is not required because we are talking about hydrogen like atoms hydrogen like atoms should have only one orbit so this electron uh, moves round and round in the circular path and we know that any electron or any object which moves in a circular path needs to have a centripetal force and that centripetal force is provided by some different force. So when this electron moves round and round like this, it experiences a centripetal force inwards and that centripetal force is given by an expression mv square by r. So mv square by r this m is the mass of the electron or the object which is moving in a circular path r is the distance from the center or the radius of the circular path v is the velocity by which the object is moving in a circular path now this centripetal force is the force provided by some different force and that force over here is the coulombian force of attraction so this is positive charge, this is a negative charge. So there is a force of attraction on this electron inwards. Here one more thing to note that actually the nucleus is not at rest. The nucleus also moves but here making the version more simpler, we are going to consider the nucleus to be very heavy and stationary. Otherwise we will have to use the concept of reduced mass over here. So let us uh, don't we are not going to make the problem more complicated and this force is being provided by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 which is the permittivity of the free space considering the everything to be in vacuum and this electron is getting pulled by this force. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Z e into E. So that is Z e into E is the charge of the electron, Z is the charge of the nucleus upon R square. So this is the first expression right of the centripetal force. Next is the angular momentum. So angular momentum as discussed is equal to MVR and MVR is equal to NH upon 2 pi. Here let us keep N as N only actually it has to be 1 over here but let us generalize it. N is the principal quantum number of the orbit in which an electron is revolving, H is the Planck's constant. Let us square both of these terms both sides. So M square let us call this as an equation number 1, this is equation number 2. We are squaring it M square V square R square that is N square H square upon 4 pi square and I am going to find the value of v square from here that is equal to n square h square upon 4 pi square m square r square this value of v square I am going to substitute it over here and in that way I will be able to find out what is the radius of an atom. So this value if I substitute it over here so m by r times n square h square upon 4 pi square m square r square that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square upon r square. Let us cut r square r square from both sides. Anything else? Okay. So now let us rearrange 
and find out okay 4 4 gets cancelled one of the pi gets cancelled so this expression would be even more reduced so in that way we can now find out the value of r from here and the r value from here would be equal to r from rearranging here would be equal to n square h square epsilon 0 upon pi z e square times m. So if you rearrange you will find out the r value turns out to be like this very important expression and from here let us give this as 3 from here we can also say that for a given atom for a given atom the value of radius is proportional to n square it is because rest everything is constant so you can write down like this okay and uh, actually for a given atom otherwise uh, for a given atom the value of z is constant or else r proportional to n square by z so if we are talking about different atoms if you want to compare two different atoms then this would be the expression for a single atom uh, if you are comparing different orbits then this would be the expression now we would be talking about the total energy of the system and the total energy of the system comprises of kinetic energy and the potential energy here we are finding out the total energy of the atom which consists of the potential energy of this pair of electron and proton and the kinetic energy of the electron because it is in motion so the total energy is equal to kinetic plus potential let us write down the kinetic energy of the electron because the nucleus does not have kinetic energy it is at rest that is what we have considered over here so kinetic energy of the electron has to be half mass of the electron v square so this expression will will get it from the first equation so if i cancel this r and this r so i get mv square and if i multiply it by half so i'll get half mv square so over here also i'll have to multiply it by half so this becomes 1 by 8 so mv square is this so half mv square is 1 by 8 times of this so that makes 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r remember that kinetic energy is always positive potential energy on the other hand is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r this if both the charges are positive then u is going to be positive if any one of them is negative then u is negative if both of them are negative then also the potential energy is positive so here what is the situation one of the charge is negative another of the nucleus is positive so our potential energy expression would be negative 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 then q1 is z e q2 is e so z e square upon r right now let us add up and find out the total energy so the total energy is equal to 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 that is kinetic z e square by r plus potential so it would be plus of minus so it is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r now energy is equal to if you add up you will be getting 1 by 8 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r and that to negative right so if you solve this you will get the energy of an electron in the nth orbit like this now let us substitute the value of r which we have found out over here in this expression number 4 so if I substitute this over here then the energy expression would be e is equal to minus 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 z e square upon n square h square epsilon 0 times 
pi z e square times m right so this is what we are getting and now let's cancel whatever is being cancelled out over here so the energy term what would be getting cancelled over here so it would be the think uh, let's cancel pi okay and what else would be getting cancelled over here okay e raised to 4 so energy expression would be energy expression would be minus z e raised to 4 m upon n square 8 epsilon 0 square h square right so this would be the expression of the energy and if you substitute all those values over here of uh, because over here z and n square are the two variables rest everything is constant so if you substitute all the values mass of the electron charge of the electron so we know the charge of the electron e is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb mass of the electron is 9.11 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg and if you substitute the value of epsilon 0 and planck's constant we would be getting e that is equal to minus 13.6 z square i think z into z i missed out over here z square upon n square so final energy expression turns out to be proportional to z square upon n square a very very important relationship that we derive it from here another values of uh, the planck constant and epsilon 0 let's write it down over here so planck's constant h is given by 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule per second and the value of epsilon 0 is equal to 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 11 in si units now when you put all these values actually over here then what happens is you will get your energy expression in joules and we can convert 1 ev that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule we can convert that into ev and finally this energy expression is in electron volt so hopefully guys you like my explanation if you have any doubts please do comment in the comment section and if you are not subscribe my channel do that for more interesting videos be updated and also click the bell button icon over there so that you will get the notifications as well thank you for watching the videos